Plot Inquiries, Lords, Day 2. Cor Rautenbach asks, did Janssen and Maharaj just baseball England? I think they did. I think they did. And the great thing about baseball, despite the fact it's a word that we should probably stop using, <laughs> uh, is that anyone can take part, you know. It has, it's very inclusive. Yeah, it's very inclusive. At a time when the world and the game needs more inclusivity, basketball has come in and anyone can pick it up and run away with it and inflict, inflict pain onto someone else using basketball. And the only way to get out of this situation for England is more basketball. Uh, I think uh, Marco Janssen is the ultimate basketballer though. Some of those shots, right? Yeah, I mean, he is the embodiment of basketball because he is, you know, a wonderful bowler, can hit the ball miles, and is also too big for his own body. Oh look, it's Will asks, are Anderson and Broad a bit like Shearer and Sutton in that one is clearly a lot better than the other? <laughs> do you know who Shearer and Sutton are? I do, I do. Okay. Uh, you know, you guys think you're the only ones who know about football, right? Yeah. yeah. We won the WEFCON. Anderson is better, but we know that. I think the, the, I suppose the conversation really is that having been bound together for so long, it has been quite hard to to split them apart in England, tried it with the West Indies, it didn't work and they, and they massively missed them. You know, neither of them played much cricket coming into the today and Broad certainly looked the rustier of the two and, and said as much actually in his press conference. The way he, he got the nick off of uh, Varane, I think, yeah, um, that was that was a proper Broad wicket. And even at the end, you know, he, put his, he was chasing after balls in the field. I really get the sense with Broad that I think we've got another question down there about retirement. Yeah. Well, I might, we might as well address that now. What's the yeah, retirement Yeah, the question? retirement one from Isaac Jensen is, is Broad closer to retirement than Jimmy? And it sounded like it, right? He's so, it, it does feel like they're very attached, almost umbilically so. Yeah. And when the yeah. one goes, the other one's going to go. Yeah, yeah. But I, I think the thing I would say about Broad is that there is a renewed sense of enthusiasm here that I don't think he had before. And I think it's a lot to do with the current environment. Anderson touched on it before pre-match about wanting to get back involved with these guys. And I think Broad has that as well. And I suppose it's about who has it the strongest in terms of, or the stronger in terms of who goes first. But to say Broad is closer to retirement than Anderson isn't as much of a slur as it might be, even if the man himself yeah. wouldn't want to hear it. But I mean, that's not a stupid thing to say, yeah. Yorker 129 underscore seven says, is the big failure of baseball that they keep persisting with plans that don't work? like the short ball to Janssen and Maharaj, allowing them to add 50 plus. So I must say, they actually tried to pitch it up a little bit and that also didn't work at one point yeah. because Janssen was hitting it really well. I don't know, is that even a baseball tactic? Short no, the basketball, the basketball tactic in terms of bowling um, is basically doing what England did for the first, well, for most of the game, well, sorry, most of the day. And it was either have four slips in a gully or five slips. Exactly. It basically, it's basically holding firm as long as possible without putting people on the fence, you know, keeping catches in because that's where the ball's going to go. Although in saying that, Janssen, you know, when they had that mad... The funky field. The funky field. Yeah. Janssen edged through where first slip would have been when he had just seven. Yeah. And that felt a bit like, are we being, are England being a bit too smart here? The pub increase asks, how many more chances does Aidan Markham get? Someone like Brian Rickardson is waiting for his chance and deserves it. So when Markham came out, <laughs> There was a real big split, and obviously there are not many Tories and African journalists here, but Markham is a name who has been a name for a while, whereby you hear it as an overseas journalist who doesn't watch South Africa as much, and are like, good player. And he hit a really nice cover drive, but I thought, you know what, this, is, this, could be, this could be good for South Africa. And as soon as he got out, you were like, this is what happens. I said a bad word, you just, which you is said not a very to bad be repeated. Word. But I do, I think the Markham tactic was done out of necessity this time because Temba Bavum was not here. They needed a number four and they were a little bit scared to put Kai Zonda in because he's got pretty much no test experience except for that one COVID sub that game that he played. I, I don't think it's going to work. I think moving Markham up and down the order is like moving Jacques Rudolph up and down the order. It just doesn't pay off. I don't know that Ryan Rickleton is a number four. In fact, I'm not so sure. I also don't think he's the best keeper South Africa have got. Cal Verena was throwing himself around there. I right? thought Cal, I thought Verena kept brilliantly. He was excellent. Yeah, so. And uh, I just don't know if Ryan Rickleton's up for that. I think Markham's going to get the series. And unless things go really badly wrong, he's going to get to see what he can do at number four. And then we'll take it from there. Red Devil's supporter, controversial, right? Not controversial, it was smart. Asks, should Stoke really be doing the enforcer role? And I don't know, is this a fitness question? Or I think it is. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So Stokes has an issue with his left knee that because 
you know, he hadn't played since retiring from rodeo cricket. He'd been able to rest it because it's the knee that takes all the force, you know, um, on his landing foot. Having that fit, fit well, fully 100% fit, is ideal for someone who wants to bowl short in the way that he does. Yeah, I, I, I kind of agree with the sentiment here. It's not something, as an England supporter, you would want to see because you know he takes me out of his batting as well. But there's no one else who can do it as well as him right now. And is it only something that he's going to do if the top two or three haven't got the break? Exactly, yeah. It was the last resort, wasn't it? Yeah, that's yeah. the one. Last resort, exactly. FG Lee asks, how impressive is Marco Janssen? I mean, there's a lot of ways we can answer this question. I think he's the tallest person I've ever seen. And I've seen a lot of tall people. I think, I think he's the tallest person I've ever met. Yeah. I don't think I didn't like I don't think I'll meet a taller person than him. I definitely won't. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, I'm really impressed with Marco Janssen's batting. You know, it's little known that when he was, I think, at under nine level, he scored something like 164 runs in a T20 game. This is like a seven-year-old we're talking about. In terms of lower order bowling all rounder, South Africa tried Vian Mulder. I even used the words Lance Kruzner today, who was a uh, very, very different to Marco Janssen, but in that that's the kind of player they're looking for. They're looking for someone who can bowl, who can bat, uh, who can jig things up a little bit. So I think he's been fabulous and, and he's probably pushed Vian Mulder out of the test side. Uh, he's pushing the extra batter out of the test side too. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.